The debate over immigration reform continues, but not on Capitol Hill. Hundreds of thousands of people are expected to take to the streets in over 60 cities nationwide in an effort to get the attention of lawmakers. The Senate was unable to reach a compromise on the immigration bill on Friday, and now with Congress in recess, what will happen now? Well, joining us from Washington are Benjamin Johnson, director of the Immigration Policy Center, and Daniel Griswold, director of the Center for Trade Policy Studies, director at the Cato Institute. Uh, gentlemen, thanks very much to both of you for joining us. Sure. Thanks for being here. Benjamin, let's begin with you. Uh, now that Congress is in recess, there is uh, there are serious questions being raised as to whether we will ever uh, get an immigration bill this year. Do you think that that is in jeopardy? Well, I do think that it's in jeopardy. I, I think this issue really cuts across party lines for the most part. You see uh, Republicans and Democrats on both sides of this issue. Uh, the fact that at the end of the day it became a partisan battle is evidence that the politics is, of this is winning over the substance. So I, I think as long as they play politics with this issue, it becomes very difficult to deal with. If they get to the substance of it, I think there is a, a lot of real strong support for reasonable measures to, uh, to, to fix this, this problem and this mess that we're in today. Daniel, what do you think when we talk about solutions? I mean, here we are with a breakthrough uh, that was dead on arrival as soon as it was announced on the immigration reform bill. What do we need to do? What can we push through to get a bill done? Well, I think Ben is right, and I do think there's goodwill there to achieve real immigration reform. Enforcement without reform is doomed to fail. We can build walls all we want, fine employers, round up gardeners and janitors. The number of illegal people here is still going to continue to grow because we have continued demand in our economy and the pool of Americans willing and happy to take these jobs continues to shrink and yet we've got no legal channel. I think any reform worth its name has to create a legal channel so that peaceful, hardworking people can come into the United States and take these jobs that increasingly Americans don't want. Without that, we're just going to have the problem getting worse. We're going to have more people dying at the border. Uh, we need real immigration reform. I think the will is there to do it, but mm -hmm. Ben's right. Partisan politics is getting in the way. And Ben, what do you think, uh, a couple of issues that were in the bill last week that I found uh, a little problematic, and one of them was, if you haven't been here for five years or more, we're going to send you home. You're going to be deported, and then you'll have the right to come back to the United States. Now, uh, Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger of California wrote in the Wall Street Journal this morning that that deportation concept would cost $230 billion if you could find all of these unnamed people. Uh, is, is any aspect of a deportation angle here in any way going to work? Well, I think you're right, and I think that uh, there is a lot of concern about dividing up that population, and then particularly those who have been here for uh, as long as five years, the idea of deportation I, I don't think will work. Uh, but I, the bill itself, you know, I, I think that there was a way for those people that had been here longer than two years, but less than five years, to be able to pursue a legal status, to, to do a lot of the paperwork here, and then go home for the final processing. Uh, you know, that's, that's not an ideal situation, but I think in order to craft some kind of a compromise between these two polarized extremes uh, and, and reach what I think is the, the, the vast majority of folks that are in the middle, I think you're going to have to come up with some solutions that are perhaps less than desirable. Uh, but perhaps workable if, if, if we're committed to doing it. Right now, uh, we are looking at a picture of a march in Atlanta, Georgia, that is going on this morning. Uh, next to me, you're seeing pictures of uh, people marching on the immigration issue. Dan, i got to ask you, though, how can a deportation work? Well, I don't think deportation would work. We can't round up seven or eight million people and send them home in some kind of biblical exodus. I think in fairness to the Hegel-Martinez compromise, which is what was on the table on Friday before things fell apart, it wasn't a deportation. They could stay here legally, but they would have to go back to a port of entry and apply there with uh, something like a 24-hour turnaround. And I don't think that was unreasonable. For those who have been here less than two years, I think they need to go back and come through uh, in, in a legal way. So I think what was forged on Friday was a reasonable compromise, which makes it all the more tragic that, and let's be frank, I think the Democratic leadership could have cooperated more and didn't, Harry Reid didn't do what he should have done to make this work. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Benjamin Johnson there at the Immigration Policy Center and Daniel Criswold at the Cato Institute. Well, Intertel used to be...